are two guys from Finland, Riku with the mic and Tunna behind the camera. We are the global odyssey to learn about the most bizarre traditions on Earth and to uncover the secrets this planet holds. It's just the two of us, lifelong travelers in the strangest destinations of the world. No crew, no security, no limits. This is Mad Ventures. Somalia. Somalia. This is Mad Ventures on the Gulf of Aden, one of the most dangerous, the most pirate-infested ditches on the planet. Offensives against boats sailing these waters happen every day, and tubs like this one are constantly carrying illegal immigrants away from the homicidal warlords of Somalia. How much uh, does it cost for Somali refugee to come to Yemen? How much he have to pay? Maybe it costs for them two or three hundred dollars. Two or three hundred dollars. If the refugee don't pay, the smuggler, what happened? They punished them. They sold them on the sea. It's very easy for them. It's very, very dangerous, yeah. Just a few days ago, the Somalian pirates seized a Ukrainian freight ship full of Russian tanks. And if the human smugglers need to flee the cutthroats, they will certainly heave their contraband overboard. Our destination is the only country in the Arabian Peninsula who accepts these poor refugees. If they make it through alive, they will reward it a haven in one of the oldest civilizations of the world, Yemen. Welcome to Yemen, the mythical land of milk and honey, the legendary dwelling of Cain and Abel, Gilgamesh and the Queen of Sheba, a place as old as human history itself. Okay, these guys will take us from the port town of Aden to the capital Sana'a. And there we will build up our convoy and start to travel towards east, towards the most notorious desert of the world, the empty quarter. There, in the harshest of conditions, live the Bedouins of Yemen. These people are said to be merciless kidnappers and terrorists. We will travel to one of the most dangerous tribal areas in the world to find out if it's true. Do you think that uh, the U.S. Embassy bombing was done by Al-Qaeda? Any bomb that happened for, with the tourists, it's from Al-Qaeda. They kidnapped the tourists, but they are not killing them. We're soon approaching Sana'a. Just two weeks ago, there was an attack against the U.S. Embassy with automatic weapons, hand grenades and a car bomb. Almost 20 people got killed. Travel warnings are in place for U.S. citizens, British nationals and Scandinavians alike. So being a gringo seems to be a risky proposition right now. Welcome to Sana'a. This is Babal Yemen, the gate of Yemen. It's amazing. You wouldn't think you could find these kind of vibes in the world anymore. It's like straight from the Arabian Nights. Our presence has not gone unnoticed. The news about bombings and kidnappings has made Yemen a place rarely visited by tourists. To fight the odds against any worst case scenarios, we'll wear Yemeni clothes to better assimilate with the locals. Fuck it! Salam! We'll have to buy a jambia also. This dagger is like a tie to the most Yemeni men. Higher the social class, more expensive the barlow. We haven't seen a single woman face yet. Probably we won't see one and most definitely we won't be able to hang out with any female. 
this certainly feels weird for us, but that's the way of things here, and to discuss this issue would take another episode. So, as guests, we'll just have to stick with the male bonding. <laughs> This is straight from the fairy tales. Hundreds of muezzins giving their prayer calls from the hundreds of the minarets of the hundreds of the mosques in the capital of Yemen. It's just purely beautiful here. It's 4.30 in the morning. The first prayer call. This is Arabian Nights. Where are we going? Fuck. Where are we going? To Where are we going? Huh? To the Bedouin country. <laughs> <laughs> now you start to look like Arab. This is more like it. We don't want to be easy targets for kidnappers, do we? Next, a planning session in a Yemeni way. Yemen is a deeply religious Muslim country, old school Arab mixed with African influence, even a hint of Afghanistan. There's still vital and unchanged traditions here. Nowadays Yemen is also well known for its guns, its cut and its tribal area, one of the last wild frontiers in the world. And that's why Madventures came here. is a mild amphetamine-like stimulant, illegal in most of the world, but in Yemen. It's an 800-pound gorilla, a runner-up in esteem only to Islam. The leaves are chewed whenever, wherever and by everyone. But the most preferable setting is a cut party, like this session here. An evening with males, some cut, a bong, and of course some mac, cap and yakety yak. And people, some like of the wisdom people, they think if we, uh, I mean, quit, cut, it could be some other like disease and problems come to the country. Mm -hmm. Some chemicals, some heroin, uh, cocaine, other things. So they prefer that people has cut, which is something like for energy, and uh, it's like coffee, just heavy coffee, and can be like a social drug. We call it also. If you have a problem in the morning, in the, any day, you come to the cut station, try to find like the right people, and solve the problem, social problem. I mean, I know all the people in the street, they come to Chukat with me every day here. Other houses also, they have big sitting rooms. I mean, we go, I mean, with friends, we sit in one uh, room, talking to each other and this. So we are more like connected. Mm -hmm. This is the, like the good uh, side of cut. Here's some bad side of cut is water. I mean, like economies somehow. And water, that cut is taking, uh, I mean, a lot of water. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah, and so we have less water in the, in the country. How do you feel? After maybe one and a half hours, really, really good. Pretty amped as well. My cheek is getting a little bit sore. I'm not like Kamal. Kamal is like Mr. Dizzy Gillespie here. You could lose a baseball in a trained cheek. <laughs> I, I have a problem. You're just a boy. I really like this uh, habit of nipping little bits of the plant. Something familiar, right? <laughs> yeah, it's familiar for some of you maybe, and, and us as well. The Arabian night goes on, chewing, talking, enjoying the great company and the high quality cut. Tonight no sleep, tomorrow it's gonna be desert. Is there any possibility that we bribe somebody? No, I mean, it's really because we are under supervisors from the Ministry of uh, Information. 
So we just have to stay, change the plan and hope we, we, go, we go near the desert, we go to the desert area in, in uh, Hadramaut and uh, we hope we get the permission to get to the tribal areas, to the desert. As soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, inshallah. Inshallah, yeah. Vitu vittu. So Riku, tell us what is the situation. As Kamal said, it's not now allowed for tourists, for any foreigners to go into that area, but we will definitely try to hit in. <laughs>